formidable broadcaster and defender of the English language, John Humphreys is on his way back to school. I am conducting an English language class. Which, and I've never done He's it. agreed to take part in our teaching challenge. Yeah. OK, Fiona. Thank you. I need it. Bye. I have views, as, as you know, about some teaching methods, particularly as far as English is concerned. But I suppose one of the weaknesses of the old system of education, and there was a lot right with it, as well as things wrong with it, was that, that you were told, you were taught, and the desks were in rows, and the teacher stood at a blackboard, and that was that, man. you sat there, and you kept your mouth shut unless you were asked to say something, which was rare, but by and large, you sat and you listened. That was my education. But his destination today couldn't be more different from his own education. This is top set year 11 at Eastleigh Community School in London's East End. I hope they aren't too horrible to me, really. <laughs> Normally, they are taught English by the Guardian's London Secondary Teacher of the Year, Phil Beadle. Please, looking this way, please. But it's all very well and good for senior broadcasters to start sentences with conjunctions, but not for us. I've been teaching them for a year and a term, and they are passionate and spirited human beings with a love of literature and language. When you were nine years of age, somebody in this country died. Who am I talking about? I just hope that, that they're going to be interested and, 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 and we have a reasonable exchange and both learn a teeny weeny bit from each other. I, I don't think Titi's spoken yet, have you? If I remember right, I think it was a Sunday. Titi will impress with um, her maturity and her depth of knowledge. Uh, Raphael right at the back. Um, regardless of race, religion or your status, everyone most articulate members of the class is Raphael, who, who has occasionally struggled to connect with other subjects. His speaking and listening abilities are, are really quite special, and he has a quite profound intellect. Abby Gobbio Lamine is really quite a spectacular human being in all ways. They're, I could go on. They're, they all have something absolutely unique about them. John Humphreys is coming in to teach you a lesson. Just a little bit of information about John Humphreys. He's written a book on language called Lost for Words. As we are studying English language, it is entirely appropriate for us to be studying sections of this book. What I would really hope to do is get them, and, and this they will already do if they've got good teachers, and I bet they have, uh, but just get them to think a bit more about the way they speak, um, and ideally the way they write. Uh, but some of his prospective Abby. pupils are going to be hard to convince. In the first section of the book, I was quite appalled at the metaphor he used <laughs> of the butterfly. Um, that is what I would have done in year seven. And he tried to be stylish, but no offense to Mr. Humphreys, I, I was not liking that metaphor at all. It was, I was not impressed at all. I think I have a bit of an idea of how people of that age, children of that age, um, regard the English language and the way it is taught to them and what they think about old farts like me. Us as a class could never win um, a conflict, like an argument against anyone of John Humphrey's dialect because their dialect is, is seen as being more efficient. Why do you want to win? Why can't you just agree? Yeah, why can't we all smile? Anybody else? He asked the questions that everyone wants to know and it puts